Hi everybody and welcome to my channel. What I'm going to be showing you guys today is how to make a background generator and in this background generator it creates a linear gradient effect with two color inputs. So when you click the colors it'll change the first tab will change the color on the left side and then your second tab will change the color on the right side. So this is just a really cool effect that you can add to a background and I'm going to show you guys how to do it so you can have it for yourself. So first thing you're going to do is go to this website called CodePen. And CodePen is a great website to um, go to to create different things using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And they have a bunch of different projects that people have created that you can check out. And of course, a space for you to create your own. So majority of the things are free. And so you can make a free account to create anything. So once you make your free account, go ahead and click pin and it'll bring you to this page like this. And it has HTML, CSS, and JavaScript already linked together. So you don't have to put anything in HTML to link to CSS or link to JavaScript. CodePen does all that for you already. So you can just start typing the code. So first thing we wanna do is click this little pencil here to change the title of our project. So I'm just gonna name it background generator and then we're going to start with HTML so the HTML is just like the bare bones of my website just the words that I want to come up and the inputs that I want on that page so I'm going to start with an h1 tag and h1 is just saying like that's the largest headings that I can have it goes through h1 to h6 with h6 being the smallest so h1 I'm going to use to say background generator and then I'm going to put a closing tag which means I'm done with that line then I'm going to hit enter to start a new line and I'm going to create an h2 tag which will be a little bit smaller than my h1 background generator title I'm just going to say made by awakening stem and you all of course can put whatever you would like it to say for your second title or you cannot have a second title at all and then next this is I'm going to put my inputs and this is where I clicked to change the color so I'm going to use the tag input and then I'm going to put the word type I'm going to put an equal sign and then I'm going to identify what type of input that I want and so the type of input that I want is color and as you can see the little tab already came up right here for us to change the color and then I'm going to put the word value and I'm going to put the equal sign quotations and then I'm just gonna put a hex color which is just you can look up it's just a bunch of different colors and then um, the numbers and letters that go to that color and so I'm gonna do 8 C to C B E and what that does is just sets the color that I wanted to start out as so I want the button to start out as purple so if I were to look up this hex color it would come up purple and then I'm just gonna close that awesome now I'm gonna do the same thing for my second input so I'm gonna do input again not caps lowercase I'm gonna put input type equals color and then I'm going to do another value and this is optional again because the default is the would be black but if you want the two tabs to start out as a different color then you can put any color that you want and so the color that I have already is E zero zero B D eight and then I'm gonna close that see that's a pinkish color so so far we have four lines of code which gave us two titles and then our two input buttons and when you click them they already will change like this okay so we have all of that so far then I'm going to 
do an H3 tag under the tabs. H3, again, is just a little bit smaller than H2 and H1. Not cats. And I'm going to say just an instructions for the people that come on the page. So click the tabs to change the colors. And then I'm going to close that H3 tag. All right, so I have the bare bones of my website right now. I got background generator made by Awakening STEM. I have my two inputs where we typed here, inputs, their colors, and then I set them to purple and pink. Then I did an H3 tag under it that says click the tabs to change the colors. So we are done right now with HTML. Now I'm gonna go to CSS. And CSS is gonna add some styling to my page so it doesn't look as boring as it does right now. So I'm gonna start with body, the body tag. And the body tag is saying that I want this to happen on the whole page. So I'm gonna use a curly bracket, which is just the syntax for our CSS. And then I'm gonna say font family. And this means that I just wanna change the font on my website to a certain font and to not the default font that's up there. So I'm gonna use one of my favorite fonts. You don't have to use mine. You can use whatever you would like and see how it automatically changed it already. It changed all my words to the font that I picked. And then I'm also gonna put cursive because I want it to be cursive. And then I'm going to hit enter. And now I wanna change the color of my text. So I'm gonna change it to indigo so anything that's on the body of my page will be indigo and as you see it changed the color and then I'm going to do text align which is going to center my text when I put center I could also say left or right see it moved it to the center if I changed it to right it would move it to the right and then of course, if I put left, it would move it back to the left. So I want it to be in the center. And then I want all my letters to be uppercase. So I'm gonna say text transform, and this transforms it to what I say, which is uppercase. So now all of my words, or letters, excuse me, are uppercase. Now I'm gonna do letter spacing and this just spaces out my letters, how I want them to look. So I'm gonna say 0 0.5 EM. See how it's spaced it out a little bit in the words. And then I'm gonna say top 10%. And then I'm gonna do background and this is where I'm adding my linear gradient so I'm gonna say linear dash gradient and then I'm gonna put what the parameters that go inside so I could say to the right so that means it's gonna go to the right the gradient will go to the right and then I can put the colors that I want so I could say purple and pink and it does a default gradient for me from purple to pink um, I could also say to the left so if I delete right and put left it now goes from the left so you can choose which one you like I'm gonna keep right so I have a gradient background right now, but again, when I click the tabs, it's not changing anything, and that's what I want to happen. So I can create a linear background, but I wanna add the effect of if I click the tabs, it changes the colors. So we're gonna do that in a few seconds. So now I want my H1, my title, to look just a little bit different. So now that this is closed, I'm done with the body, added some style to the body. I'm going to choose H1, and that means I'm selecting H1 from here in HTML 
So I want to change background generator. So I have H1 and I want the font to stay. I'm going to change the font just of my title. So I'm going to say font. And then I'm going to say, sorry, font family. And then I'm going to say fantasy. And that changes that. And I'm going to say cursive. So uh, you can have different fonts on your page. So if I wanted this to be a certain font, but separate from H2 and H3, you can do that by just selecting H1 and adding a different font. I also want to change the color of just H1, and I'm going to change it to white. And that changes it to white. And everything else I pretty much like, so I'm going to leave the same. And then H2. If I wanted H2 to be exactly like H1, I can just go H1, I put H2 next to it, and it makes it exactly the same. So if you would like to do that and have them exactly the same, you don't have to retype the code. You can just put H2 right there beside it. Okay, awesome. So now it looks okay. And what you can do is you can keep changing it however you would like it to look. But now we want to add the interactive part of this changing the colors of the background. And that's going to happen in JavaScript. So I'm going to pull up JavaScript here. And I'm going to type the code for that so that we can make this more interactive. So the first thing I want to do is create some variables that will help us not have to write lengthy code. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to say is var, which stands for variable. And I'm going to say color1. So color one is going to be equal to my first input box here. And it's going to say var color one is equal to document dot query selector, which means that I'm going into HTML and selecting which type it is. And I'm going to say dot color one, make sure these are in quotes. And then I'm gonna put a semicolon after. Now, right here it says color one, and if I go up here, I don't have color one. And for it to work, color one has to be in JavaScript and it has to be in HTML. And so what I wanna do is go back up to my input here, I'm going to put a space and I'm going to add a class called color one. And what this does is makes it able for me to select this first input. So I just want to select this one and then I want to create another variable that lets me select this one. So that's all this code is saying. It's saying a variable color one, which I just added right here, selector, creating a selector selects color one and that's all I'm doing. So I'm going to do the same thing for color two. So var color two equals and I can just copy this and paste it and change this to color two. That means I want to go back up here, put a class equals color two. And then there we go. So make sure that whatever you put here, your classes for your input matches here exactly or it won't work. So make sure that it matches. The next thing that I wanna do is create a tag for the whole background or body of my page. So I wanna do var body and I'm gonna do equals and I'm gonna say get this time, I'm gonna say document dot get element by id and by is capital and I'm going to do parentheses and gradient and then a semicolon after so this is the same thing for here I want to go up here to the top and I just want to create a body tag 
and body ID so that I can select the whole background of my page so that I can code it. So I'm going to say body ID equals, and I'm just going to put gradient just like I had in JavaScript. Okay, so this just creates a selector here for me to do down here. So if I, I just called the whole background gradient so that I can identify it here in JavaScript. All right, now we're gonna create a function um, called gradient that is going to take the input of the colors and then change the background. So we wanna say function and then gradient. I'm gonna put a curly bracket and then in inside I'm gonna say body dot style dot background. And this is gonna change the background style what how I want it to change I'm gonna put equals I want it to change to a linear gradient and inside of the linear gradient I want it to go to the right and then when it goes to the right I want it to add the color value color one value so what that's saying is whatever value I put for color one, this box, it'll add it to this function. And then I'm going to say plus, put this comma in, plus color two value. So whatever I put in for color two, we'll add on here, plus And then I'm just gonna end that. So what this is really saying is, I want to change the background, the body style, the background of my body. I want it to be a linear gradient. I want it to go for, to the right. I want it to take the color one value, whatever I put in here, and the color two value, and make that background with those two values. So right now you would think it works, but it doesn't because it has to listen or take the input that we're putting in. So we have to create something for that. So I'm going to say color one dot add event listener. And what this does, it's listening to whatever value I put here. And then I'm going to say I want it to be an input. And then I want it to go through the function gradient. Then I put a semicolon. So add event listener. I'm adding an event listener to color one. See, now color one works. It's listening to my input and then running it through the gradient function. So right now, color two does not work. So we have to put the same thing for color two. So I can just copy and paste this. And instead of color one, I'm just gonna change it to color two. So I'm gonna save. And so now my left side changes and now my right side changes. Awesome. So I hope you were able to create this background generator and here is the code. Now you have your own code to create a linear gradient background that is changeable and that's so awesome. And so I hope you subscribe to my channel and check out more tutorials from Awakening STEM.